Hello everybody, this is Kyrix, and as you can see, we're here to talk about Star Trek Online. Now, I've mentioned this a couple times in This Week in Kyrix, that I've been recording my various uh, Let's Plays of Star Trek Online. I'm knee-deep in the Romulan campaign, I've just started the Jem'Hadar campaign. Uh, months from now, I'll be doing the original series and eventually the Discovery campaigns. But that still leaves two campaigns left that are just completely untouched, that being the standard Vanilla Federation campaign taking place in, you know, the normal Trek timeline, and the Klingon campaign taking place in the same timeline. And uh, that's what I'm here for. You see, those, unlike the other four, which are solo endeavors, th these are team efforts. Uh, the Both the Federation and Klingon runs will have three players. The problem is, I constitute only one of those, which means I need to find people. Two people, specifically. And I've been in talks with friends of mine, but the problems are myriad. Uh, one of my friends is very into the game, but only the PC version, which is not cross-compatible with the PlayStation 4. Another of my friends is interested but is hard to get a hold of, and the internet isn't that great there. And another one might be interested, and we need to do some playtesting, but again, also almost impossible to get a hold of sometimes. And while I would love nothing more than for these two people to be my partners for this little adventure, I have to go with as stable a choice as I can come across. And that brings me to this, and I have reached out to everyone I know on the various Discord channels I've been on. I have, uh, for years now, been a part of a Star Trek Online Facebook group, and I reached out to them and haven't gotten any real hits on it. So, I am coming to my channel now to uh, make this little advertisement, as it were. So, uh, what do you as a potential partner in this endeavor stand to gain from this? Well, uh, quite a lot actually. It's, uh, it's actually a much better deal for you than it is for me. Because uh, this will be an entirely premium item run, which means we will only be using premium characters. We will be using as many premium bridge officers as we can get a hold of. We will be using exclusively premium ships, which is ships you pay real money for, or grind a fuck ton of dead lithium for. And, uh, sorry, the dog was making a move on the litter box, and that's just not legal. And, uh, like I said, ships from the dilithium store, or the main store, Basically, stuff that will cost a lot of money. But you, as a potential player, do not need to have any of these things. I don't care whether you have been playing this since the day it launched on the PlayStation 4 and you have every ship known to man. Or, if you just got your PlayStation 4 today and you're just dying to play some Star Trek Online, and hey, let's hang out with this Kyrex guy. What can I, What do I have to lose? Now, what this costs me is quite a lot. I did some basic math, <laughs> and uh, the numbers come out to anywhere from $100 to $150 per player on mine, which is why there is a vetting process. So if you're interested, contact me, you know. Uh, my messages on YouTube, I try to read whenever they come up. So if you want to send me a direct message on YouTube, go ahead. Uh, leave a comment, that's always available. And we'll try and set up some hangout time, where we just hang out and play Star Trek together. Just no, no pressure, no recordings, no nothing. Just you and me doing some missions, seeing how well we gel together, if we... If we work well together, if we work off each other well together, because uh, screen presence, in quote marks, is going to be important for this, because it will be recorded. 
And the vetting process is a threefold system. First off, we will be playing for quite a while, like through multiple story arcs. This will confirm that A, you can be relied upon to show up multiple times for events. I mean, if we try to have five sessions and you make it to two of them, you're probably not going to work out. <coughs> B, it also shows that you and I can get along well enough to go the distance, that we can go and not grade each other's nerves, or at least to do so in an entertaining way. And last but not least, it helps ensure that you're not just going to flake out, take the money and run kind of person. Now, I'd love to say that's not an issue. Uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to game with the two friends that I mentioned, because I know them. I've known them for years. That's not an issue. If they take the money to get the ships, they will get the ships with it, and they will contribute to the game. So there will be a lengthy vetting process, and if possible, I would like to be vetting multiple people. You know, like, whether it's, oh, I'll game with you from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and them from 6 to 8 kind of thing, or whether I get a group of three of us together and just see who has the best chemistry. But in an ideal situation, we would begin the actual recording process in September. That would give me time to get most, if not all, of the, um, oh, what is it, the money needed. Actually, now that I think about it, an ideal situation would have a start in November, because there's almost certainly going to be some kind of Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale going on, which would allow you to get the ships and items much cheaper. Which, again, this isn't a case of me trying to cheap out. Whatever is left over after all the requisite things are gotten is yours. That's how I operate. So if you get, you know, $150 worth of Zen, which is the store currency, or better yet, you get huge discounts on that, so you get more like, say, $185 worth out of 150 and you get all the stuff you're supposed to get, and then you have like 80 left over, or $80 left over, or whatever, that's yours. Buy what you want, you know? Get new characters, get new character slots, buy ships that you're not going to be using in the Let's Play. So, again, what's expected out of you is pretty simple. Show up for the vetting cycle. Uh, basically, you're auditioning for the part. And, like I said, ideally I'd love to just take anyone and everyone who shows up, but I only need two per campaign. And chemistry matters. If we're just going to not interact well, or I make jokes that you don't get and it's not funny that you don't get them, or vice versa, or we're constantly fighting and not in the fun way, like, oh, look at these two. It's like, oh, God, these two. Again, that won't work. And I don't require you to be hyper-competent. If you are playing, say, my engineer, fi uh, flying your, your learning process can be part of the process, you know? Uh, spoiler alert, in one of these, I will be playing a science officer, which I have a very interesting way of playing. I tend to play them more psychotically violent than my tactical officers for reasons I can't even begin to place. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so, showing up for the vetting process... Obviously, showing up for the actual recording sessions. You will be required to record the footage because this is something of a buyer's guide. This is a case of, hmm, I'm starting out. Should I buy the Akira class refit? You know? Or, should I get the Nebula class? Is it really worth my money to get the Enterprise mod at level 1? That kind of thing. And while on my screen they can get glimpses of you doing all sorts of impressive stuff with your starship, it'll be more impressive if they can go to your video and see it from your screen. And that brings us to the next part of the recording process, which is you are not required to have your own YouTube channel. If you do, I will link to your channel for the videos like, hey, this is my episode four of the Federation run. 
to see my engineer and science people click the bottom links you know and vice versa and uh, if you don't want to do that we will figure out a way there are like five or six ways that come to mind that we could do for you to get it to me the footage and I will put it up on my channel as your video like hey this is this person's footage of this same let's play and then of course we will try and keep ourselves basically in sync so that the videos are all done uh, a headset will be required for communication purposes and they're they're honestly relatively cheap you don't need something elaborate a little ten dollar thing from Walmart will get you by and obviously the most important thing is you have to get the ships you have now if you for example you're playing my engineer and you already have every cruiser known to man then when you get that money you get whatever you want with it just make sure you save room for your character and your officers and whatever else you want to use uh, let's let's talk what ships we're going to be doing. Now, depending on what class you choose, there are a myriad of ships that are available. Generally speaking, most tiers, there are six of them, tier 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the lieutenant, lieutenant commander, commander, captain, uh, lower admiral, and endgame tier, basically. And generally, they only have one ship to choose from until you get to say the admiral tier stuff the tier five tier six at which point it really opens up uh, the science officer i believe has two choices at one point it can do uh one ship or it can do a vulcan ship for example um the engineers the cruisers likewise have the excelsior or something else i think and I want to try and keep it to the Federation variants whenever possible, like, you know, like, oh, this is where I get the, the, uh, the Constitution class, let's get the refit for that, you know. Or this is where I'd get, say, the Constellation class, let's get the refit for that. But generally speaking, I can be talked out of that easily enough, because it's, it's still appropriate for your class. I mean, if you're playing an engineer, try not to get a science vessel, because we're already showing that off. Now, for the Admiral and Tier 6 ships, I want to show off the big boys. Meaning, for the cruiser and the Federation, I want you to get the Odyssey 3-pack that has the engineering, tactical, and science versions of the Odyssey. Put all the, the uh, consoles on it and show that thing in its full glory. Likewise, for the science vessels, I want to show off the Vesta class. And when it comes down to it, I might see if there's some kind of uh, triplicate version of an escort for me to run as well, instead of, say, another Defiant. But we'll come to that later. That's something I have the option to do at any point in time, because I have access to my own account. And... The Klingons get a lot trickier and a lot messier, but that is months and months away. I'd rather get the Federation taken care of because it's a lot simpler to work with. So, generally speaking, as long as you have the ships and all the things required, like, don't get to captain tier and not have a premium captain ship for your class. For example, like, oh, I, I decided to get this triple instead and it, it may be short you know that kind of thing don't don't do that uh, show up to the recording sessions do the recordings and either upload them to your channel or send them to me which is honestly easier because I have these things on a schedule and it can be kind of weird if my stuff comes out eight months after yours does you know but uh, yeah this is me putting out a call for players for the project and it's technically a job because you are getting paid for it in a manner of speaking uh, granted it's more a case of me giving you the materials you need for it but in the end it really costs you nothing it's all coming out of my pocket unless of course you didn't have a headset in which case you're kind of on your own to get that but other than that and, uh, sorry about the on, and if you're looking to break into Star Trek Online and you want to 
you want to get some premium stuff, all you got to do is finish the project, and that shit's yours forever. Uh, there are specific uh, rules to the playthrough, which is, first off, you do not play your character when we're not recording. Simple as that. You just don't. Um, and I, I emphasize the word play, meaning anything that will boost your experience or stats or whatever in any way, shape, or form. So don't, uh, don't do missions. Don't do... Uh, what does it say? Um, you know, marks and stuff until level 65, at which point it doesn't matter anymore. You can off-screen grind all you like. Uh, we will not be doing replays on missions, except as a group, and only when noted in the Let's Play. Uh, you're free to go on the character and tweak stuff as much as you like. Like, I have uh, recorded the first episode of my Federation character, which is a solo endeavor, because that the tutorial is single-player, period. And since then, I have gone on several times to tweak my loadout with stuff that I have available. Uh, second major rule is you can only use special equipment that is for ships that you have in your playthrough that you've unlocked. For example, you cannot... Uh, if you're playing the science vessel and you're in the captain tier, you can't go on to, say your your uh, Sao Paulo class defiant and pull off your quad phaser cannons. We're going to ignore the fact that none of the science vessels can equip those anyway and just say you can't do that. Or likewise, I happen to own the Enterprise Constitution class. I cannot pull out my NX-01 and use the blue phasers on it because I'm not running uh, cruisers in that playthrough. But I can take anything off the NX and put it on my next ship and take that thing's powers and put it on the next one and so on and so forth. The sole exception to this is that uh, a recent update, at least at the time of this recording, has allowed Tier 6 ships to be played at any level and has changed their starting equipment so that they will now level with you. So we will all have tier 6 ships as a matter of this playthrough and I encourage the players to pull out at least one of those tier 6's you might have to do more for this and basically put those auto leveling weapons and shields and impulse engines into your ships your, your tier 1 ships loadout and then delete that ship because you can always reclaim it later so that that's one less thing you have to focus on. You don't have to focus on, oh, I really need this gear, because your gear is leveling up. Uh, note that I said the standard issue stuff, you cannot say, um, for example, I have the Cardassian trio, the, uh, the Gamor, the uh, Damar, etc. classes, which are like the intelligence Cardassian super things. I can't take their consoles off and put them on my NX because the consoles are a unique thing for a ship I'm not using in this playthrough. But I can take their spiral wave disruptors and put them on the NX because it's part of the standard loadout. And in fact, that's exactly what I've done because my character is a Cardassian. I'm like, I want him to have Cardassian weapons. So he does. They're not functionally that much different than standard phasers or disruptors. They have... Uh, Oh, what's the word? They have traits of both, but they're just hybrid weapons. They don't do more damage. They just have a couple more effects. And they're not overpowered for being used in the game. You know, I use them. I didn't notice much of a difference than if I just used the standard loadout. So, can't grind until level 65, at which point it doesn't matter because you're not going to... What we're trying to avoid is, I don't want us to finish a video with all of us at level 17... And then the next video, you're at level 35 and we're at level 17. Once level 65, the max, is hit, you can't out-level us anymore. You can do what you want off-screen, just don't, don't ruin things. Like, if you 
once you're at level 65, you're using your tier 6 ship, don't switch ships on us. You know, that's your ship for the rest of the game. And uh, that about does it. So don't, like I said, don't grind. Don't play your character, except as noted. Uh, don't cheat and pull stuff that you're not supposed to have. Because uh, we're, we're trying to keep some rules to this. There's really nothing stopping me from, say, loading up the Valiant Class Defiant and just running through the game with it. But that's, that's not showing off the things this Let's Play is meant to show off. Uh, please note that at this point... I'm only auditioning Federation partners. Like I said, the Klingon is way off, and I'll deal with that in the future. And uh, note that plans may be delayed. Like I say, I want to start in September or November, for sale reasons. But financial stuff comes up. I only make so much money, and uh, sometimes shit happens. Like, this past month, I basically, in a very short amount of time, had to dump about $300 that I wasn't planning to spend. And that has screwed up my finances throughout the month of July, so that's something I just have to live with. So be aware, and hopefully be understanding, that I might say, oh, we're going to start in September, only to find out, oh, we're not starting in September, something happened, I had to drop 80 bucks, so I wasn't able to get the money for your ships, you know. This is something I am serious about pursuing. I know once upon a time I had done a uh, contest that I had uh, offered a prize for, and the whole thing fell through because, first off, nobody completed the contest. And secondly, the money that I had set aside, something came up, you know. But I have a stable source of income now, make decent money, and I actually... When shit doesn't come and blindside me from nowhere, I actually have a decent amount of disposable income that I can funnel into this project. And, again, ideally, I wouldn't want to be spending this kind of money, but it's kind of shitty to say, okay, I'm going to show off all the premium ships. I need you to dump about $150 of your own money into this shit. No, this is my project. I'm going to pay for it. The only thing I ask is that you don't fuck me over. And uh, there is a perk at the end of this rainbow. A perk? Really? A perk? You know, I've already offered to basically buy you over $100 worth of Star Trek crap. What could possibly be the perk at the end of this? Well, that's roughly $150 of shit I'm asking you to buy. You know, uh, basically... Not so much that this is a present to you. This is a list of things you're getting to do this. If you see this whole thing through, play this game, start to finish with me. Don't miss sessions, that's important. And be aware, we will be covering all the story arcs. All the actual mission story arcs and a couple of the side shit that used to be part of it. Like we will be doing the, uh, the Jem'Hadar stuff. We will be doing the Breen stuff just because it's kind of important to the story. And the Gem Hadar stuff actually is important to the story. We'll be doing a couple of those. We'll uh, be skipping the Davidians. I hate them. But, you know, that that's stuff we will be showing off. So it's going to be a long project. But at some point at the end of this project, again, it's going to be one of those, wait till I have the money for it. As a present for successfully competing this, I will get you a $50 PlayStation Store gift card. And that's yours. You want to get Star Trek stuff? Get Star Trek stuff. You want to buy fucking Call of Duty? Do it. It's yours. I have no say in the matter. That's just free shit as a thank you for letting me buy you free shit and you actually buying the free shit. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a horrible negotiator. <laughs> it's like, okay, this is going to cost me 200 bucks. And some of your time. Gee, what what's what's in it for me? You know that kind of thing. Um, and again, ideally, this isn't something I would outsource. I have a couple friends, but 
I, I'm in this weird situation where I either have friends that like Star Trek Online or I have friends that have PlayStation 4s. And for hardware reasons, I don't want to do this on the, the PC, even though I already have most of this stuff on the PC, and I've had to, I wouldn't have had to buy it again like I have. Like, I have pretty much every Bird of Prey except the Tier 6 one on the PC. I have all of these Escorts except the Tier 6 one on PC already, and then I went and got them for the PlayStation. But I don't trust my computer to handle Discord for chatting purposes, uh, XSplit for recording purposes, and a fucking MMO all at one time. I just don't. And while I don't like the PlayStation 4's hardware for it, it does have this built in. Uh, that's Because that's the other thing is, uh, if you were to, if I were to ask you to record this shit, you would have to get some kind of recording program, be it XSplit or whatever, and have these massive-ass files on your computer. It would also require you to have a computer powerful enough to uh, run Star Trek Online without lagging and record without lagging. And let me tell you, sometimes the game seems like it's going fine, only to find out that it's a lag fest. Look at my AM2R... Uh, play through to see what that's like. Whereas, on the PlayStation, hey, if you have a PlayStation 4, it'll do all the things you need to do. It's just a matter of if you have shitty internet. That's the only thing that'll stop you, and that's something that the vetting process will weed out. If we're playing for four hours, and you disconnect 12 times, it's not going to work. Your internet won't allow it, you know. And that's it, you know. To do this on the PlayStation 4 just requires internet access, which you would have anyway, a headset, which is dirt cheap to get, the game, which is free, and the premium stuff, which I will be providing to you. So, it's just simpler. It doesn't require you to have the PS4 Pro, which I do have. It, long story. But you can do it on normal PS4. You can do it on the 500 gigabyte PS4. There's just whatever. It just requires the PS4 and the free game and the time to do this. Yeah, I love that I set out to make a 10 minute video and I'm fucking 30 minutes in already. But uh, it's, it's, it's a better deal for you than it is for me. This is just a passion project I had feels like six years ago. Whenever the Odyssey itself first came in the game, like the year after that. So just look up when that launched and realize that for that long I have been planning this project and this is the first time I have the resources to pull it off. Because my old computer, and probably this one, never could have managed to record all this and I sure as fuck didn't have the money. But now I've got a stable income I've got the PS4, my internet's good, I can do this now. And I can do this to the extent of uh, back in the day, it would have been, oh, you could have $25 for one of your tier fives. No, fuck that. Here's 50, get the Odyssey, you know. And uh, I'll probably do the math again. But like I said, I'm completely willing once I have my actual chosen partners for this, I'm willing to wait until stuff's on sale so that you can get everything and have more, you know, in-game currency for yourself. You know, so you can get shit for you. Because I just want this to be fun. And again, note that I said uh, you can't play this character. But aside from the officers that you get, all this shit is available to every character you have. Like if you get, say, Acacian, which is one of the playable races that you can unlock for the Federation. Uh, you can't play your Cation for the Let's Play, but you can make a new Cation. And this Cation can use all the ships that you just bought. Hell, you can start with your Tier 6 ship and just run through that and just do a whole game with your new Cation on your Tier 6 ship. 
you know, everything you're unlocking except the officers, which are a per-character unlock, this is shit that is for your whole account. Everything on your account can use it as long as it's, you know, faction appropriate. So, uh, yeah. It's pretty much as long as you can put up with me and keep the schedule and aren't too camera shy. Not that you need to actually physically appear on camera. I sure as hell won't be. But, uh, it's pretty much a win-win. So, hopefully, this will get me some responses, and we can get this ball rolling. Otherwise, I'm going to have to basically drag my friends kicking and screaming into the internet. Bye-bye, everybody.